What if I told you that this 20-year-old camcorder can create cinematic images, and that the best way for you to stand out as a filmmaker right now is to use old tech just like this? looking to make our project stand out in different ways. And while doing things differently can really be exciting in and of itself, sometimes being different for the sake of being different isn't always the best idea. However, doing things differently in ways that also complement the art that you're trying to create, well, that can take it to the next level. For our last micro short, I used the low resolution and high noise level of the Hi8 camcorder to help abstract the frame and create a sense of uncertainty. Now, while this film could have been shot on any number of different cameras, I really feel like shooting on Hi8 was the best tool for the job. Not only for the specific aesthetics it provided, but also the style of filmmaking it encouraged, which was perfect for the fast-paced run-and-gun style project that we were working on. I think the tool that we use can sometimes contextualize the way that we approach the craft. That is very true. Something about having this camcorder with a neck strap and just being able to like rest my hands on it while it's like hanging from my neck and then having the flexibility of just grabbing it, flipping the, the screen around. The form factor was perfect. The battery life was incredible. It takes a big giant Sony NPF battery. That just kind of changed the way that I approached that film. You've already been seeing a lot of shots from this very film. The film is titled Does God Love Robots? And it was a film project that we threw together basically in a day, shot it in a few hours. And I'm actually really pleased with how it turned out given the constraints that we were working with. Originally, I was gonna shoot it on a just regular mirrorless camera, but my creative partner who actually owns this camera suggested that we shoot the project on this. Uh, I actually just started a podcast with him where we talked about this very project. Uh, we've talked about it numerous times actually, but go check out our new podcast channel, Your Next Film, link in the description. I believe that shooting on Hi8 made this film a better film than it would have been if I had shot on a mirrorless camera or a cinema camera or anything like that. I found that the Hi8 camcorder lent itself perfectly to the themes of this film and what we were going for visually and narratively. Now for this film project, I used a lot of fog. Every single room we shot in, I pumped that room full of fog from our cheap fog machine. And I did that with the intention of limiting how much you could see in the frame at any given time. Specifically in adding atmosphere to the frame, it kind of creates this softness that makes it slightly more difficult to make out what's actually in the frame. Now this might seem like something you would want to actually avoid, but for the suspense of this film and as far as setting the tone and stuff went, I actually found that creating abstraction using this fog was a good way to build narrative tension. Additionally, I really liked the way that the grain from the Hi8 camcorder interacted with this fog, and it lent itself even further to this goal of abstracting the frame as much as possible. Now, some of that might seem a little bit weird to you, partially because as filmmakers, we're trying to limit noise as much as possible in the image. We do that partially by shooting at our camera's base ISO, adding ambience to the scene and then bringing the image down in post in order to create that moody look without introducing too much noise, which you know usually is the result of shooting in lower light conditions. We try to do as much as possible, like for example, shooting with fast lenses that let in more light. We're doing all of these things with the intention of limiting noise. We don't want noise, we want the cleanest, clearest image possible, or at least that's the case for you know most situations. But I actually found that the high noise from the Hi8 camcorder, and specifically you know the low quality image, actually helped me tell this story. And I think that this is something that you could take away for your next film project as well. Specifically, abstracting the frame, limiting how much your viewer can see at any given time, 
can be a good way, like I was saying earlier, to build narrative tension. The reason why abstraction is such a powerful tool for filmmakers is because our brains are constantly working to make sense of the world around us. They're constantly trying to perceive the world and to place what it sees into categories. And the more that you can abstract the frame, which essentially means limiting how much the audience actually sees in any given shot, what you're actually doing is increasing engagement by forcing their brain to work a little bit harder in order to perceive what's actually happening in any given shot. We want tension. We don't want things that are easy. We don't want to just look at a shot and make sense of exactly what's in it right away. And a great example of this in Does God Love Robots is this very shot. At first, you actually don't know what it is you're looking at. You just hear this buzzing noise. But after a few seconds of looking at this, the audience actually can piece together what was actually in this shot all along, which was, you know, the inside of a fridge. So I actually had it in my notes to talk about the limitations of this camera and how those, you know, constraints can help you make better art. But I actually don't think this has that many limitations just as far as features go. I mean, consider that this zoom range has every focal length that you could possibly need. You can get your wide shots with this. You can get your medium shots with this. You can get your long shots with this. You can, you know, see yourself, film yourself with this, uh, you know, articulating display here. And it's actually not the, uh, not the worst size. It's got a color viewfinder, perfect for filming outside. It's got amazing battery life. This Sony NPF battery lasts literally forever and you can get different capacity ones. They're extremely cheap. So the battery is cheap. The media is cheap. High eight tapes are pretty affordable. And so, I mean, in reality, like what limitations are there really other than just image quality? Obviously the resolution is low and the low light performance isn't that great. But other than that, I think this is a very capable camera for filmmakers. Now I know there's some of you out there who are probably thinking, why on earth would you want to use this crappy old camcorder that has terrible image quality, low resolution, high noise, that's arguably obsolete when you could use a high-end mirrorless camera or a cinema camera or even your phone would do a better job than this camera. And if that's how you feel, then by all means, continue using your mirrorless cameras, continue using your cinema cameras, use whatever makes you feel confident in the things that you're making. But for the rest of us, if you wanna create something a little bit unique, that's a little bit different, if you wanna leverage everything at your disposal to make the best films that you possibly can, then don't dismiss old tools like this because there's a lot that I think they can do for your creativity and for your filmmaking. Hopefully you've gotten something out of this. I hope I've inspired you in some way, if not just to use old tools, at least to go out and make your next film project. If you like content like this, feel free to get subscribed. On this channel, we talk about the intersection between filmmaking and content creation, and we cater to young filmmakers who want to create visually stunning work. With that out of the way, I've been Zach. Thank you so much for watching, and I hope to see you in the next one.